What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Locker Podcast. My name is Brandon. And I just happen to be named Jimmy. That's how that worked out. Uh, welcome back. Uh, last episode, we did our things we really enjoyed about 2016, despite all the tragic um, events that partook in that year. Um that was pretty bad. And I will say that Brandon and Patrick wouldn't let me on because I didn't get to see any movies in the theater. And they were tired of they were tired of me not talking. So <laughs> we, were, we were like, listen, if you didn't see any of these movies, how do you know it was good? So the cool thing is, is that uh, Jim and I are going to do the things we're most looking forward to in 2017. Since nothing's come out yet, Jim can now like be like, hey, this is what I'm stoked to see. And then we'll do a recap at the end of the year to see what he actually got out and saw. I'm like I'm like the sequel to Rogue One, A New Hope. <laughs> there's there's hope for you yet. Um, yeah, it's only nine days in, and I have hope. Well, you know what's funny is I did think about this after we put out the uh, episode. I was like, man, you know what we didn't talk about at all were comic books. Uh, there were a lot of good comic books last year, uh, but I know that's a category you wrote down, so I don't know if you want to. Start with that. Well, I'm I'm really looking forward to. Uh, well, I, I don't know how to preface this. I'm looking forward to some of the rebirth development on DC, specifically Superman and Action Comics. I've really, really enjoyed where that's gone, and I want to see where it's going. Uh, I am excited to see what Jeff Johns has in mind with um, the Watchmen, and I believe tying up some of the rebirth idea. Uh, but on the flip side. I've been trying to catch up on Justice League, and holy cow, are you reading that one? Yeah, I'm reading. Uh, I'm reading the most DC actually. Do you like Justice League? I thought. Wait, are you talking about the one by? Uh, are you talking about the main title? Yeah. Um, it started out a little bit weird, which is funny because I I thought the reverse with. Uh, new, you know, new 52 and all that kind of stuff. Like I love justice league, but I really wasn't a fan of the Superman titles. And right now, both Superman and action comics are killing it. Yes. I mean, they are, they are very good. Like I was, I was very wowed by everything I've read with both action and especially Superman just going mm -hmm. into like him and his son. And all, like, I, I don't know. I thought that's been great, but justice league hasn't been the book I'm looking forward to the most each week. I'm trying to say that as nice as I can. It um, sucks. I hate to say it that bluntly, but I'm like, what is with, what is going on? This is to me, it's, it's like a, um, an independent comic book creating new characters in a real, in a weird world to try and get us to, to, to read it. Whereas yeah. like, you guys have the Justice League here, why are you doing this? Yeah, I'm. I, I agree with you, especially when you look at Marvel right now, and we've got the U.S. Avengers and the New Avengers and the Uncanny Avengers and like 19 Avenger books, and it's like yeah. you got one Justice League. Make it good. Yeah. And um. Then I mean, there's a lot going on with Rebirth right now. I'm stoked that Wally West is back. I will say the thing I'm most excited for with comic books this year is that Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo will be doing the big event mm -hmm. of DC. That should look amazing, and I'm betting that the story's going to be pretty good too. Yeah, we're, we're in Vegas, so if you're going to bet and gamble, I would bet on those two anytime. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, they're they're pretty much a sure thing. Yeah, I agree. I'm also excited to, and I don't. This is a weird thing. I don't know if I'm actually going to read it, but I'm excited that we're kind of getting back to the roots of X Men with Marvel. Dude, X Men's been so good too. Oh my god, I've loved it. That's I'm I'm excited for that. I I really I'm you know you know me. I'm a kid in the '90s as far as the comic books, and I know there's a lot to make fun of but the x-men were awesome and i i loved that era of uh, x-men so i'm glad they're kind of going back to that you know it's funny because like i you know i do enjoy i i don't often look too far into the past with comic books you know i'll like learn my history and learn stuff about the characters or read like the big stories but um the 90s x-men is definitely one of my doorways or you know into comic books mm -hmm. and i've always loved that vibe 
And I feel like a lot of the books now, especially after Inhumans versus X Men, it kind of looks like they're going back to that vibe. And I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Like I'm really stoked for everything they've been doing. Yeah, it's funny because I get people, especially with the Marvel movies out, they're like, "Oh, do you read Iron Man? And do you read Hulk? And do you read Avengers?" I'm like, "No, I'm a product of the '90s. I read the X Men, and that's <laughs> that's pretty much what I read. And I know their movies are hit or miss, and the last one was definitely a miss." But um, yeah, I'm. I still. That's that's where uh, that's where my heart is with the X Men. Yeah, I, I like to see that they're going back into a good direction with uh, the X Men. I mean, they're doing blue and gold, which would be cool. I think they're doing like a big family book. Iceman is getting his first series uh, solo series ever. Uh, Jean Grey is getting her first solo series ever. Um, so yeah, it should be just really good things from both uh, major companies. Uh, Seven to Eternity, uh, which is an image book, an independent book that I really love. I'm excited to see like a full year of that and mm-hmm. see what comes along. You know, there's a lot, a lot of good comics out there. That's for sure. I'm uh, excited to read more from uh, Greg Rucka, Lazarus. I love that book. I'm bummed he's getting so big and popular, like writing novels and stuff, because it's like, no, dude, go back to Lazarus, please. Dude, Greg but, Rucka is such a good writer. Like, I know. Um. Pick up uh, – I'll, I'll look it up. I'm so stupid for not knowing this. But he did a Wonder Woman – oh, he's doing Wonder Woman right now for DC, which has been really good as well because he's going – every other issue is current and then the other issue is like basically year one of Wonder Woman. Nice. Um, yeah, but he's, he's doing right. – the only thing I don't like about it is that he kind of took um, Brian Azzarello's run uh-huh. and was just like – Nah, nah, I'm doing this now. And I'm like, okay, well, that sucked, but whatever. I mean, I loved I loved Brian Azzarello. That's kind of a bummer because Azzarello's run was really good. Oh, dude, so good. I hope this has the pronunciation because I will mess it up. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't do this. Someone will find this like years from now and just <laughs> roast me for it. Uh, it's, a, it's the Greg Rucka Wonder Woman graphic novel. Uh, JG Jones is the art. It's amazing. I'm not going to say the name because I will butcher the shit out of it. So, moving on, uh, let's talk about the uh, actually TV shows um, yeah. this year that I'm excited for. I just saw the teaser for Powerless, which yeah. is the DC show um, that'll be on NBC. Um, it looks like they're working for uh, Bruce Wayne. I, I forget the name of the. It's like Wayne something, but um, let me see here. I mean, we got Vanessa Hudgens, which is awesome. Danny Pudi from uh, um, Community, uh, Alan Tudyk, Ron Funches. I love Ron Funches. Yeah, and I really this looks a lot funnier than I thought it would be. The only thing that scares me is those three letters you said, NBC. Yeah, there's definitely some things they will drop the ball on. Oh, it's Wayne Security. That's awesome. Yeah, I know that. I was like, you, you got me. You hooked me in with that one. Um, but no, I agree with you. Uh, sometimes NBC will take good shows uh, like Community and just kind of like let them fall apart. So you know, Parks and Rec, Thirty Rock. Yeah, I, I, I really didn't like how there was like a time there where they were like, let's take the funniest things we have and rush them off the air. Like, uh huh. Yeah, we don't we don't like good and we don't like funny. Get them off. Right, like uh, Parks and Rec is not nearly funny enough for NBC. Uh, I'm really stoked. Uh, I know this this sort of blurs the lines of TV, but uh, Netflix and Marvel, they've got Iron Fist, Defenders, uh, and Punisher. Yes. 2017. So yeah. excited. We get um, – yeah, we get, we get Iron Fist in March. Yeah. That should be great. Yeah. Um, be great. And I'm so curious how they're going to pull everybody together with the Defenders. Yeah, and I love I love Marvel because Marvel realizes, hey, you know what? We had a great little you know quote unquote cameo of Punisher in Daredevil, and he did awesome, and people want more. So let's make a Punisher TV show. Cool. I just I mean, love that a pun the Punisher has been this like limbo character for so long. Where like they made a movie and they're like, no, it's not violent enough, and then they made another movie and everyone's like, oh, this is just stupid, senseless violence, and you almost start to think like. Maybe we'll never get a good Punisher yeah. ever 
And then it just like just like Spider Man, Marvel swoops in and is like, "Hey guys, let us do this," and they kill it. Like they just oh yeah. Kill it. It. <laughs> I'm speaking of that. We uh, well no, when we're still on uh, TV shows. Um, what else is? I mean, we get another season of Game of Thrones. We have to wait a whole another couple months for Westworld season two, which I'm so well, anxious for. That's going to be a whole year off, so we don't, we won't see it in 2017. No, we don't. We don't get that in fall. Yeah. No, we do not. Get out of here! I, I know, sir. I know they they announced season two, but it'll take a year before. Oh, we... get out! Come on, guys. I know. Get your shit together. I kind of feel the same way, but at the same time, I'm like, all right, if you do it right, fine. Because the way it ended, I was like, oh god, that's that's ended. Okay. Oh man, that was. So I'm 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 hoping that just means we you know what we got to do this right. So we're gonna take a year. Oh, fuck. Come on, guys. That's so. All right, all right. I'll wait patiently, but goddamn. Um, I will say, and I, I know, I know what the show is. I know it's super cheesy, but for some reason, I have fallen lo- in love with it. I want more Lethal Weapon, and I really hope it gets renewed. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, really? I'm really? fully aware. Have it's you watched? It? No, man. I have. I haven't. I haven't even. Don't knock it until you watch it. It's, all right, all it's right. good. I did not like I think it was going to be terrible. It just wasn't on my list of like, oh, man. I thought it was going to be terrible. I'm like, how can you replace Danny Glover and um, Mel Gibson? Because those two together, that's the movie. And they have. And it's fantastic as a TV show. I thoroughly enjoy it. Well, I will tell you, I, it, it was the white guy I was unsure about for the show. He's actually, I was surprised. He, I, I really don't know him from anything, but he is really, really good as Riggs. Damon Wayne's like, yeah, I, I was like, okay, he's funny. I bet that'll be cool. Uh, oh, is he, he was in Wrist Cutters. I didn't know that. I didn't recognize him. Um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay, well, I guess if he's doing good, I'll have to watch it. So There's also... Um, Last of my list that I'm looking forward to, it's going to come out in uh, October, I believe. Uh, I'm super stoked to see uh, the Cleveland Indians win the World Series. <laughs> Boy, I don't, I don't think so, man. I think, I think they had their chance. And although you guys did just sign, um, Incarnacion, you know he was a he was a 51 here in Vegas. Was he really? I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, because uh, they were the Blue Jays uh, farm team before they were the Mets. They were the Dodgers before that, and then they became the Blue Jays. But him and JP, whose other last name I can't pronounce, um, both got called up. Um, but I remember seeing both of them play briefly. But I hate the Blue Jays, so at least he's not on the Blue Jays anymore. Might like that guy now. Yeah, I kind of like how when the playoffs started, and not to get too sports nerdy, but Brandon and I are sports nerds. Yeah. But, uh, the playoffs start, and like, oh, you know, the Blue Jays and – the Rangers. I, I was so happy the Blue Jays got eliminated. I was just, oh man, it was funny because I don't, I don't hate the Indians by any means, and this World Series was a lot easier for me to watch because I was just like, hey, here's good baseball. Like, yeah. it was, yeah, it was a good one. But I don't know, maybe next year. I mean, we got, uh, you know, Greg Bird back on first base for the Yankees, so you know, I think we're gonna do uh, pretty well. But anyways. We'll stop talking about that. Sorry, guys. Sorry to talk about sports. Let's talk about video games. Um, the new uh, South Park video game comes out this year. Do you know the title of this, Jim? Because it's pretty funny. I don't. It is called The Fractured Butt Hole. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you already got me when you said fractured butt. <laughs> the Fractured Butt Hole. So it's B-U-T and then W-H-O-L-E. Um, the first game was felt like you were just like playing a South Park episode. It was awesome. So I'm really excited to see what they do with this. I mean, they include, you fought Man Bear Pig, which was just Al Gore. It was all awesome. Like it was, it was really, really well done. So I'm excited to see what this one brings. It's, um, it's not video games, but this is a, a story on, we were talking about like how time passes. Yeah. Our very first DVD on my very first my DVD player was South Park the movie. Ah, uh, wow. Yeah. It ate things a little bit. I want to say my parents bought me and my brother that for 
Christmas one time and not kind of realize it. Like, or I, I think, so. no, I think, been. I think at that time they just submitted. They were like, they're going to watch this stuff. There's nothing we can do about it. Cause I remember that being one of like the early DVDs uh, we owned as well. That's funny. Cause I, I want to say I was in college when that happened and you're like 10 oh, years old. Yeah, I was definitely, I just remember like when that, like when that show was getting popular, my parents were like, we'll watch an episode and decide if it's okay. And it was the episode where <laughs> Jesus and Satan wrestled. Yes. And the next morning my mom was just like, no. I was like, all right. <laughs> I remember my dad being like, it was, it was funny. I'm like, damn it. I want to watch it. Um, another video game, which uh, I am so excited for. And just, this was something that originally I saw on Kickstarter. I was like, I don't know how much this is going to get, but it's happening now. It's coming out Friday the 13th, the game. I was hoping uh, you were going to say that. Nice. Yes, that is – I've seen gameplay for it, and I am really excited to just get involved with that. Um, I mean, you either play as Jason or one of the co- counselors trying to get away, and I'm trying to figure out which is going to be more fun. Because I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's going to be a strategy, a strategy to both sides. Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked because uh, I, 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 th- I want to say I played it once. But there was an old NES Friday the 13th game, which I thought was weird to begin with. But Oh, yeah, that's the one they have all the uh, action figures of, the purple and the blue mask yes. and all that. And yeah. It's like, why is he on here? And I was even too young at the time. <laughs> these movies. But I knew that's not really something for kids. Uh, so I'm very happy to see a much better updated graphic version. Oh, yeah. And I saw somewhere like you're going to get to ha- like unlock all the skins from all the movies. So oh, that should awesome. be cool. Um, Injustice 2 comes out, which should be fun. Uh, another Halo Wars 2. Um, there's a few that I can't find right now. Oh, I know the Spider-Man game comes out, which is why I'm going to have to go get a uh, PS4 because it's an exclusive. Um, I think there's one called We Happy Few. Yeah, We Happy Few, um, which looks kind of creepy, like Bioshock-esque. Not, it's not, I know it's not the same at all, but... It kind of has that vibe, like the throwback vibe. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Either way, um, I'm also. I know this sounds weird. It's not a game, but I'm excited. Uh, I guess to see Nintendo's new console. I'm not necessarily going to run out and buy it, but I'm. I'm curious. Curious what they're coming up with. Well, you're not going to run out and buy it because it's probably going to be sold out everywhere already. Kind of like the Super Nintendo Classic thing they just came out with. Yeah. Like I even remember, like I I was never interested in owning a Wii or a Wii U, but anytime I walked into any store. To buy one, they're like, oh, we're sold out. I'm like, hasn't this been out for like a year? Yeah, but we're still sold out. So, like, I'm hoping for this to come out just so I can get the Nintendo Classic, uh, you know, the... Yeah. Whatever that is. That I can't remember the name. The Super Nintendo Classic thing with all the games on it, like Zelda 1 and 2. And yeah. yeah, I mean, yes. yeah the, and I feel like I won't be able to get that until this new one comes out. Because that's how Nintendo does this. Like, it, dude, the, the Xbox comes out and it's like, hey, can I get an Xbox? Yeah, here you go. Cool. You does, do all your friends have an Xbox? Yeah, we all have an Xbox. Okay, awesome. Hey, I'll get a Wii U. And then they, like, laugh at you. You're like Arnold Schwarzenegger asking for a Turbo Man. The people at GameStop are just like, he wants, a, he wants a Wii U. Like, why do they not have enough of these? What the What is the goddamn problem? Yeah. But then I don't have, know anyone with a Wii U. That's the other thing. So who's buying all these things? Well, I'll tell you what. We just got one for Christmas because James absolutely had to have it. I'm like, fine, whatever. Not thrilled because it's going to be obsolete here in a couple months, but mm-hmm. fine. They were hard to find. Dude, why? Why? I don't I, uh, know. It's so unbelievable. To we me. got a refurbished one from uh, GameStop, and I'm like, I don't know why these are hard to find. I'm not paying full price because – like I said, they're going obsolete, but okay, we've got one. Dude, it's unbelievable. Like everywhere you go. Oh, it, it's, oh, it's maddening. It's maddening. It's an anyway. illusion, Michael. What are the, <laughs> tricks are for, what's he saying? Tricks are for, tricks are for whores. Tricks are for whores, Michael. Oh God. Um, what other, what are the lists we got here for 2017? Well, we didn't talk about movies yet. Okay, let's talk about movies because I see a lot of good movies coming out, Jim. Yeah, I, I agree. And okay. oddly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with – I think this is the first release coming out that I'm, I'm excited for. And I'm excited because I saw the original or the 
the first one and I had heard it was pretty good. And I'm like, whatever. Anytime somebody tells me something's good and I see it, I'm like, you suck. That was the worst movie ever. <laughs> but John Wick, did you see that? Dude, John Wick was really good. Like, I was floored at how good right? that was. I, I thought that was going to be a throwaway and I was fully exactly. entertained the entire movie. The whole time. Like watched it again and I was like, I don't usually watch it back to back, but this is good. So I'm, I'm excited for, to see the sequel. And then I, I think you'll agree, the next one that comes out, and I, I, I've, I've said this before on our podcast, I'm nervous because I think the trailer and the music match up perfectly, a la um, Suicide Squad, that the movie could suck. But I'm looking forward to Logan. Dude, um, I'm looking forward to Logan, but I'm looking forward to Logan because I love um... – okay, I'm trying to say this in the nicest way – like possible um i love hugh jackman uh-huh. as Lo- as wolverine i think he's perfect but the reason they've never rebooted the x-men franchise is because yeah. he's such a good wolverine and they didn't want to lose him in the shuffle of all this and so i'm really excited for you know him to do his farewell to wolverine just so we can kind of get the x-men movies back on track it's weird because it's like i don't want to see him stop being logan or well, you know, being Wolverine, but like I, I yeah. want the X Men movies to get where they should be with Marvel and everything like that. Um, but now I'm, you know, I heard it actually a couple of days ago that Logan might not be his last movie. He's having second thoughts, and I'm like, God damn it! Well, I, I read that one of the reasons he's having second thoughts is Ryan Reynolds and him doing a Deadpool Wolverine movie. If they stay outside of – and I, I know nerds. I know they're both in the X universe. But if they stay outside of the, the normal X-Men universe, I've got no problems with them doing whatever they want. Me neither. I did like – I think it was actually on the podcast a couple episodes ago. Probably a couple because this is only like what? Episode 7. Um Where you said like just have Deadpool playing with action figures and being like, oh, all that shit was in his head. This is the real universe. Like that way, you can still keep the good actors. Play- like, dude, I don't want to lose Michael Fassbender as Magneto. He is so. Oh, he is. Per- he is. Oh, he's perfect. When they when they came out with First Class, and I'm like, there is no way you're going to replace Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen. You can't. You can't do it. And they nailed it. I was like, holy crap! Fassbender and McAvoy are just awesome. Okay. Move them to the current timeline with Deadpool. I'd be fine. Who gives a shit, guys? It's you guys that you guys watched Apocalypse and X Men Three and all the other ones. Like, just let's transport them, and no one care about like continuity because they don't. They don't care about continuity. No, I agree. If you watch, if you watch Origins, Emma Frost is a child, and then you go back into the fucking seventies, and she's an adult. So you know, nothing makes sense. It's fine. Let's just keep the actors we really like because. Those three right there kill it as those characters. Um, We also get Guardians 2, which I've been stoked for since the first one. Yeah, that trailer looks good too. Yeah, oh, that trailer looks real. I mean, and that's just a teaser. Um, And I think the song uh, Fox on the Run, that was actually supposed to be on the first mixtape. He released a full thing of songs that didn't make it. I know that one wasn't on it. Um, never been to Spain by Three Dog Night wasn't on it, so I'm wondering if he's recycling some of these songs because he really wanted to use them. But uh, yeah, really excited for that. Kong actually looks really cool. Uh, might get a really good King Kong movie here. Um, Thor. Now that we saw spoilers, guys. Now that we've seen that Doctor Strange is going to be in it along with the Hulk, and Thor knows how to drink a beer like a mug, dude. Right? That is like he downs it, and then he's like, "Oh, cool, more beer." Yeah. I'm going to party with Thor. Uh, Spider-Man, I think that's going to be awesome. Michael um, Keaton, man. that I love that dude. And to see him be a villain. Yeah, in this. Oh, awesome. Dude, here's one I didn't even know was coming out. War of the Planet of the Apes. Oh, my yeah. God. Have you did not you seen see that, that trailer? No, I did. Whoa, I did yeah. see it. Like, I didn't even know it was – I didn't know they were working on it. I saw the trailer, and I was like, oh, shit. Woody Harrelson is like – one of my favorite actors that is 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 let's see not mainstream I guess you can say like I love when that dude's in a movie he's awesome he's always good whether it's funny or serious like he he's awesome did you hear uh, did you hear the rumor I mean this is not about coming up this year but the rumor that he might play 
uh, Han Solo's mentor. In the Get Solo. out of here. Oh, I know. I was like, I don't know oh. who that is, but that's awesome. Do it. Oh, that's great. Oh, that would be so cool. Um, wow. Like, yeah. like the guy that like teaches him and I'm assuming Lando, which is going to be Childish Gambino, man. Oh, no, I know. Donald Glover. Like when they announced that, I was like, of course he is. Of course. Yeah. Like, cause he's basically as cool as Lando anyway. So, you oh, know, yeah. all makes sense. Um, you know, which one I'm, I'm kind of like, I've never been, I, I, I'll say the movie and then maybe you'll understand where I'm coming from. But I've never been like more curious to see a film than I am to see Cars Three. Okay. Because that did, did you see the teaser trailer? I did. It's the darkest. Like, like I'm like, who's making this film? And it's like Pixar. Yeah. What? Like, it, I don't. It, I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm gonna walk in there and it's gonna be like I'm watching like Cars Three, directed by Martin Scorsese. Or Cars 3, a Pixar film. Like, I'm so confused. Well, and it's weird because, like, the first Cars, I actually enjoy. A lot of people ripped it. But then the second one, when Mater's like a spy or whatever, and you're like... That was weird. What the hell is this? And it, it quickly became apparent that John Lasseter just absolutely loves Cars and loves this world. He and then in order car. to make Pixar less, he threw planes and all that over on Disney it's like, what is this world you're creating? Will it die? He loves talking vehicles. Yeah. He loves it. Guy. Well, I remember, yeah, the first one's like, oh, it's a movie about cars. Oh, he's a race car. That's cool. Oh, cars too. What are they racing in this time? They're going to Europe, but they're spies. What? Michael Caine's a car. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Cool, man. That's all right. And then, yeah, that was like maybe the one that always passes under me. Now this one, I'm like, is is Lightning McQueen gonna die? Like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I, I feel like if I had a kid and we watched that together, I don't know. Like, like oh yeah, there's gonna be some parental screening before. Are, yeah, like, are your children like, Dad? I want to see that. I think because <laughs> well, James, like, we had the DVD and we had to buy a second and I think even a third DVD because he wore it out. He loved that movie so. And now it's like time to learn about getting old. Yeah, if it's like Bambi in the beginning and, oh, there goes Mater dead or there goes... Like Mater just gets murdered. Yeah, it's like, uh, <laughs> sorry, kids. Guess that wasn't kosher. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I guess it's not. I guess it's not. I don't know. But yeah, that's a weird... I'm going to see it, but like... With the with the most confused look on my face as it starts. Oh, for sure. Um, we, I, you know, have, uh, we talked about a little bit of Marvel. We also have Wonder Woman and Justice League coming up for DC. Wonder Woman looks amazing. And they're batting a thousand with movie releases. Let me tell you, between... And by that mean, I they suck. <laughs> uh, Wonder Woman looks great. That yeah. second trailer looks great. I think this is going to be a really good movie. Justice League, I, I here's the thing, man. Like, I don't want to talk shit. Like, DC's my 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 favorite. Batman's my dude. Like, I I I said I said in the last review, I was like, even if he hated it, like, we did get to see the big three on camera yeah. last year, so that was cool. But I just I was talking to my dad about this because he just watched Civil War for the first time, and he's like, why is Spider Man so good in Civil War? But he wasn't good in the movies they did. Yeah. And I like, you know, I think Marvel goes, what are the fans like? Okay, cool. We're going to do that. But we're going to like, you know, we're going to make it so it moves as a movie as well. Whereas like, you know, DC just gives it Zack Snyder and Zack Snyder's like, I'm an artist. Yeah. And I'm going to, I got an idea for this. Like, I don't give a shit. I will argue this with you until I'm blue in the face. Batman doesn't murder people for any fucking reason whatsoever. No, he doesn't. I understand the first comic book, he shot people. There was something in the Dark Knight uh, Returns that Zack Snyder like used as a reference where like one person got shot. Yeah. And it's just like, dude, come come on, man. Like, yeah. I, I, That bugs the shit out of me. And I just, I think it was trying to put too much into it. So I'm hoping that with Ben Affleck being on board for Batman, and I, I heard he was helping a little with Justice League because 
Ben Affleck's a great filmmaker and, you know, an incredible actor. I'm hoping that they can kind of turn this a little bit because yeah. I'd love to see a solid Justice League movie that you could put up next to the Avengers movies, you know? I completely agree. I'm a little nervous at the trailer. Like, the trailer for Wonder Woman, I'm like, that that looks fantastic. Um, oh, dude, just just spot on. Like, the trailer for Justice League? Man, I don't know. There's scenes that I'm like, that looks awesome. And other scenes I'm like, dude, that looks like I shot it in my basement. That looks awful. Well, it's like we talked about with Cyborg. Like, Cyborg's like, I didn't know Batman was real. You're a half-human, half-robot. How yeah. is this hard to believe? You're plugged into everything, dude. You You are the internet. Yep. Hey, you know what? As far as good DC movies, though, we got the Lego Batman movie coming out this year. <laughs> That's true. Can't tell me you're not excited for that. That is true. I, I cannot argue. Uh, we get a sequel for Kingsman. Man, that's another one that's right up there with John Wick. People tell me Kingsman it was awesome. I'm like, whatever. If it was awesome, I would have seen it, right? Yeah. Wow, was I wrong. I finally saw it and I was like, this movie's amazing. Dude, right? It was so good. Like, ah. Yeah. Uh, that was great. I'm excited for the sequel because I'm sure – like the thing is, is I think the uh, same with the along the lines of John Wick. Like it's just – like you're not really expecting too much out of it. Yeah. So when it does well, you're like, man, this was entertaining as shit. Like the fight scenes, everything was just great. I love love that director. It's blanking on the top of my head right now, but he did the first kick-ass. And um, just I love that dude. His action scenes and his use of music – so phenomenal. Oh, it, it, everything flows just perfect. Uh, Matthew Vaughn. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, everything just flows so perfect together. But yeah, the the fight scenes in all those movies are great, and I can't wait to see more of this. Now, as a horror fan, I want to ask you, what are your thoughts on The Mummy? Uh, I saw that teaser trailer. I don't know if they've released more, but I saw that teaser trailer. Um I personally am a big fan of Tom Cruise movies. I think they're fun. I think he does them well. But that teaser trailer did not get me excited to see the movie at all. How about you? Um, Here's the deal. If they were remaking a Mummy movie to remake a Mummy movie, I would give it a shot. Well, I'm going to give it a shot anyways because I I'm, I love the classic you know, mm -hmm. Universal movies. Um, I don't really care about the gender change or anything like that. Like that doesn't bother me. Just make a good movie. But I know the end game of this is they're trying to do like this and Wolfman and Dracula and they want to do like a big mashup movie. And that just doesn't make sense to me because like they're all monsters. Like, like this isn't Monster Squad. Like, no. And please don't remake Monster Squad. That movie's just perfect the way it is. Don't don't do this. But it's just like what are they going to come together to do? Like okay, we're going to like kill people together, I guess. I don't know. I I love I I'm right there with you. I love Tom Cruise movies. Like they're entertaining. He's an entertaining actor. Um you know, if I if I let everybody's personal life like dictate how I watch my movies, I wouldn't be watching like Yes. Most movies like, you know, Gran Torino is a great film. Clint Eastwood's a grumpy old racist man. Yeah. But uh, like, yeah, I, I, I'm, I like his movies, so I'll, I'll check it out. I just, I'm not sure what to think about it. Yeah, exactly. And, and maybe that's part of the problem. The teaser trailer didn't really reveal much. So it's, it's like, uh, and I hate these teaser trailers. It's like, do a trailer or don't. Don't do well, a it's, trailer it's before a the trailer. trailer. But it's like a minute and 30 seconds. And I'm like, how long is the trailer supposed to be? And then they put out another trailer that's like two minutes. And I'm like, okay, so it's the same trailer with 30 seconds of other shit. Yeah. Like, I always thought a teaser was like a flash of the title and like a character. And then it's like coming soon. Yeah. The, the perfect example would be that Comic-Con we were at and they revealed uh, Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Which yep. at the time I think it was just Superman two, but it was like awesome or Man of Steel two. I'm sorry, Man of Steel, Man 2. Of Steel like, two. Yeah, awesome. We're getting well, it. Showed the double logo, and you're like, awesome. Yeah, that's a teaser. Yep. Showing me what the story is about is not a teaser. No, so. I completely agree. Off of off of horror and comic books and everything, I want to say before we get into things we don't think are going to be great. Mm -hmm. um, I really want to see Fist Fight with Ice Cube and Charlie Day. Because I love both yes. of them so much. <laughs> I and saw like, that trailer and I was dying. Dude, I'm I like, this dying. is gonna be like this is gonna be a stupid movie, but I can't wait to watch it because like Ice Cube is phenomenal. 
Charlie Day is phenomenal. Yeah. And, like, to me, Ice Cube is still the most terrifying person on the planet. Like, I will always think he is, like, just the most intimidating, scary dude ever. And it's like, he just challenges Charlie Day to a fist fight. They're both teachers, and they're going to fight after school. And then as Charlie Day goes around and tries to, like, tell people about it, everybody's, like, encouraging it to happen. So I'm really excited. I don't know. I think it'll be funny. So. Uh, it looks genius. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. Stoked to see that. Uh, I'm... Back to the horror, we skipped over something that may or may not come out. It's been teased a lot, but Friday the 13th, the 13th installment. I've heard so many mixed things about this, and I really hope that we just get a good Friday the 13th movie, because I think it was way back in the day you mentioned to me that they were thinking about doing found footage, and I threw up in my mouth a little bit. That was, uh, again, talking about time, Brandon, that was like three years ago. That's how long we've been doing Nerd Locker. We came on and said, yep, that's the next one. But they've since jettisoned that idea. They're not doing found footage. They're back to a script. I don't know where they are in this because they had talked about going back to sort of a, uh, it sounds funny saying this out loud, a period piece, um, like 80s. So I don't know exactly where they are in this. They had also talked about maybe introducing Mr. Voorhees into the scenario. But... um, just don't overcomplicate it. Just I like, know, I know. It's like uh, Jason's not that complicated. Just do a good horror film. Yeah. But supposedly, and it lines up. Octo- I believe it was October. October. I was going through the calendar right now. Yeah. There's one this month, and then October is Friday the Thirteenth as well. I mean, there's no better month. To no, that is um, well, so. unless you did June because isn't June Thirteenth like his actual birthday? I honestly don't know. I could. I was. I always thought it was. I don't know. I don't know why I thought that. I thought they referenced it in one of the movies. But, yeah, I mean, that would be perfect if they have it together and they could do it. Um, I don't know. I, I liked I liked the last one. I, you know what? It's funny. I did my list of uh, the Friday 13th movies, breaking them down, and I had that one near the top, the remake. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought they did well. It they was solid. combined the best elements of the first four movies and told a good good movie. But, well, like, yeah, when those kids, at the beginning of the movie, when the kids are out in the woods, like, he talks about, like, Jason as, you know, things have happened before. And everyone's like, yeah. oh, no, it hasn't. And I thought that was really cool. I also love that as they were dying, I was like, why is everyone getting killed off so quickly? And I was like, oh, my God, this is just the intro. Like, yes. there's going to be a whole nother group of kids. Yes. Uh, oh, dude. Yeah. I enjoy it. So I don't know what people are complaining about. Um, oh, you know, we didn't talk about what we're excited for is Star Wars, guys. Star Wars Episode Eight. Whew. I uh, I can't wait. I can't wait, and a lot of it has to do with um, you know finding out Ray's lineage, which I hope they don't change because of all the opinions going around. But really, I can't wait because we get to see Carrie Fisher be Princess Leia theoretically for the last time. Yeah, that's. I, I really, I'm looking forward to that, and I. I I I hope her death doesn't dramatically alter the storyline that they had set in place for the next two movies. But um, yeah, I'm excited to see how that goes. I remember like when when Heath Ledger died. I remember the first thing on my mind was like, "Oh my god, did he finish? Did he finish the Dark Knight? Is Dark Knight done?" Like I, you know, because that was all I could think about. But to be honest with you, like I didn't even think about that until later with her yeah. like oh, same way some i read in fact there was a facebook post that i saw i'm like wow i didn't even think about that and they had said oh she completed her she fin- yeah you know i did the same thing i'm like and when it when they when i saw the announcement i was stoked but honestly that didn't cross i, I think i was so shocked by it for the longest time that it wasn't until like you know a couple of days later yeah that i was like oh uh, oh shit she finished filming okay like but yeah, I mean that'll be that'll be cool. I'm sure, like, you know, you, you can already get emotional about Star Wars and all that, and you know, just especially with the the heavy things we were dealing with in the first film. And yeah. I think going into this, realizing it's the last time you're going to see, theoretically, like you said, Princess Leia on screen, Carrie Fisher on screen. I think this is going to be a big emotional roller coaster of a movie. So. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited and I'm sad, but I'm excited either way. For as dumb as it sounds, how how is Disney gonna treat it? As far as you know, you know, in memory of or whatever. Um, oh, they, I mean, they have to, man. You can't not like. 
you know, I know she, I know she wanted to be known for more than that, you know, for some of her career and then, you know, really embraced it later on. But like, it's who she is. And it's more than just like princess Leia. Like I had someone be like, no, like she's general Organa yeah. in this movie. And that's who she is. And that's who she's been the whole time. Really? Like she's been this hard ass princess who, you know, is fighting mm-hmm. and that's badass. So I'm really excited. I don't know. Yeah. I'm really excited for that. Um, things I'm less than stoked about, uh, boss baby. Uh, um, Smurfs guys are making another Smurfs movie. Yeah, I, I, I can't like, yeah, I'm going to have to watch it too. That's what sucks. You are. That's the one for sure. Jim is going to see this year. It, that, that, or, or if there's another uh, chipmunks movie, I'll have to see that. Oh, you poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, how about transformers? Can we throw that on the list? I like how the trailer is like mm, King Arthur stuff. And then it's regular war. Like what? It, I don't, I don't know, man. I just, it's, it seems like it's the same thing. It's like, I, I think I think I told you this. When I went and saw the screener for the third one, and I'm sitting there, and I'm watching it, and it was one of the radio ones where they had you know a whole bunch of people watching it, and the movie was over, and the theater erupted in applause. And I'm sitting there going, is this the finished film? Because I, I feel like this is a test print, and you're not done. But that's how that's how we've gotten to yes the fifth one is because the audience goes nuts because they're like oh my god yeah I remember being in the theater for the second Transformers and being the only person that clapped for Optimus Prime getting murdered and Bumblebee getting the shit kicked out of him <laughs> and like I had to listen to everyone cheer every time Bumblebee showed up and it's like the, the what are we at five movies now and Bumblebee still can't talk like. Like, and everyone's like, yeah, it's Bumblebee. Like, oh, he's so cool. Like, he talks through radio songs. Yeah, yet somehow Optimus Prime can come back from the dead. Yeah, like 900 times. I don't know. It's whatever. I so bad. absolutely don't. I don't know. I don't care about that movie. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't bring this one up for other reasons, but uh, I can't say I'm excited to see the next Alien movie. I can't hear you. What was that? <laughs> because yeah. because I mean if there's one emotion you should feel for Alien Covenant especially after that trailer especially following up how good Prometheus was Hold on a minute. I'm be, falling asleep like I did to the trailer should okay, be stoked that trailer looks so good Jim and I didn't bring it up because I didn't realize – I don't know how long this argument's going to go on for. By the way, I still think this video of us arguing about how we liked or disliked Prometheus is still our top viewed video it on uh, YouTube. It is. Because Jim has the unpopular opinion of thinking that Prometheus was a bad movie. It's an awful movie. I don't think it's a bad oh, movie. It's awful. You? It's like the worst. And what? as far as trailers, when that Prometheus trailer came out, I watched that, I don't know, a hundred of times. It was so good. And so was the movie. Was amazing. Then when you see that pile of crap that Ridley Scott shit out his asshole, oh my God. You're a monster. So bad. You're a monster. Oh, hey, look at all these things that we need to do to create the alien. But it uh, can never happen again. Oh, it, wait a minute. No, it obviously does. No, it's like a black goo. What's the black goo? It's an accident. Like it, it, it just happened. Nobody means to create it. Uh-huh. How did you not like it? This is going to be so good. Nobody meant to create Prometheus either, I guess. And we got, we got Michael Fassbender reattached to a body now. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Michael Fassbender is awesome. I like Billy Crudup. I didn't really see uh, a lot of Nomi uh, Rapace in it, so I don't know what's going on. I don't know if she like dies right away or something. And we're getting we're getting Danny McBride. He's doing the, uh, you know, he's trying to do the serious roles. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm going to pull up Brandon. We already lost Idris Elba, so we can't see him again. I'd love yeah, back. yeah. I mean, he, but, but I mean, he's pulling a. Uh, what's the What's the best way to 
word this. Um, he's pulling a John C. Riley, like a, like he's starting to do the serious stuff. Yeah, I mean John C. Riley did the serious stuff first, and then became hilarious. But now we're gonna see Danny McBride be all, and I think he's the captain. It looks like. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it does. This is gonna be so good. It doesn't matter. What did you? What about? I feel like they made a crappy trailer so that now my hopes won't How be. How is that out. trailer crappy? It's, it's just oh, action, 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 action. <laughs> Who cares, dude? That. At that, least this time they showed us the alien, so we're not as, oh my god, are they going to do it or not? Oh, cool, there it is. Sorry, the xenomorph for all those real nerds out there. Oh, that are you breaking. guys are killing me. Awful, Brandon. No, no, wrong. Everyone tell Jim how wrong he is. Awful. I already got it. I snuck, <laughs> in, the, I got it. I snuck in a trailer trash talk on Brandon, and uh, somebody came... To his defense, not really, but somebody said, why are people hating on this already? You all asked for it, but yeah. Yeah, that smart guy who said that because that was smart of him. <laughs> it's such a good... Oh, my God. So, okay, real quick. What is what is your ranking of alien films here, counting Prometheus? Cat, I don't know. I, it, it ranks above... I don't know. It's hard to say because it's not like... I think the thing that you don't like about it is that they like sold it as the the origin story to Oh, here's mine. Alien, Aliens, Aliens 3, <laughs> Alien Resurrection, You're Earth, ridiculous. Alien vs. No, no. Any other you alien dare. movie that could don't possibly exist. You dare say that this was worse than Alien vs. Predator 1 and 2. Alien Resurrection's better than Prometheus. You're insane. You're a crazy person that needs help. Nope. Not at all. Oh, my God. I was God. entertained by every one of those movies except Prometheus. Oh, you don't make sense. I it, don't get it. It's an awful movie. It's so good. It, here's the thing. If they would have if they would have advertised this movie without even mentioning that it was a prequel to Alien, would you have enjoyed it better? Uh no, because it's just a crappy movie. Oh, you're a, oh, you're nuts! You're nuts, uh, Brandon. I have literally tried to go back and watch this to try and find out how so many people could be wrong. How? No, how and you could be wrong. My only you're the wrong is that you are part of the electoral college, and you are a Trump supporter. Where I am in the majority and voted correctly. That's the only thing I can come up with. Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't you dare call me a Trump supporter. You feel dirty. Oh, I just, I have to shower now. It's gross. <laughs> yes. Ugh. But I, I tried to go back and watch it. Allison didn't see it in the theater because I saw it at a press screening and I tried to show it to her and we both were like, man. We That's what I was it. upset about too is like the press screening came and you were like, nope. You're like, nope, uh, Jimmy's going to this one. And we we're like, God damn it. And then I remember we like filmed and you didn't say anything. <laughs> and you were like, all right, just record me for the, the review. So I was like, all right. And you just started trashing it. And I was like, is he fucking with me? Like, is he, is he just saying this? Like, and then he's going to film his real review later. Like I was sitting there behind the camera, just jaw dropped. Like, what are you talking? What are you talking about? And you hadn't seen it yet, right? This no, was just, no. Yeah. So I was like, you're lying. And then I saw it and I was like, oh, Jim's sick. Jim's not well. So. Yeah. Well, don't worry because Kelly saw it with me and she didn't love it, but she also didn't hate it like I did. She's somewhere in the middle. I'm sure she loves it now. She's got a soft spot. <laughs> oh, man. Well, listen. I I have a lot of hope for this movie because I the irony it. is Ridley Scott has only made one, and, and I'm not joking, one alien movie. Yeah, because technically Prometheus was its own thing. So I'm very curious how a second alien movie that's set before his original alien movie. I am curious how it's going to go. I'm curious the timeline, the storyline, what planet they're on, and that I did say that from the beginning. I've always wanted a sequel to Prometheus because I didn't understand. They answered zero questions in the movie. They just asked a whole bunch of questions. 
No, they just created like the Crap. the. Oh, I don't. I, listen, it's a really good movie. Yeah, let's get some more space jockey. Are we gonna guess who the uh, who the android is in this movie? You mean another one? Well, yeah. There's always there's one in every movie. Uh, I'm curious if he is necessarily a android. And bear with me here, or at least the android we know. I'm talking about Michael Fassbender. Yeah, I am interested to see what that is, whether it's like the person or if it is. Because they show him down on a planet, like leading an expedition, and it almost kind of looks Earthish. Yeah. And it's like, okay, are they pulling an Alien 3 where they're. They based the droid on a real person, and now the real person is in the movie? That That's something I was thinking about. Um, there is a name on the cast that I'm thinking could be, and it's James Franco. I was wondering that, too, because I – did you see him in the trailer? Did I – I don't remember seeing him in the trailer, but I remember I looked up the cast, and I was like, oh, okay. Like, that another one I thought – logical... The other one I thought along those lines was also Guy Pierce. Because his name was on it, and I know he is – what's his name? Peter Whalen. Yeah, and I'm like, okay. He's obviously the richest man ever. Well, yeah, I didn't know if that would be like – yeah, that or if it would be like a flashback. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, he'd be the kind of guy that would download everything he knows and his essence into a droid and then have that going around. Yeah. But yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I think that one's going to be a flashback, and I think you're dead on that it's going to be James Franco. Well – We'll see what happens with this great horror film that's coming out in 2017, but uh, be excited. Be excited because you're going to love it and you'll realize that Prometheus is good. I it's really wish two things. I wish a chest burster would come out right now out of my chest <laughs> so that I wouldn't have to feel the pain of Donald Trump or seeing this movie. Oh, that that is a rough comparison. Like that is... Listen, you're going to take that back because nothing is as bad as... I knew you were a Trump supporter. I, don't you dare ever put me in that category. You just said you you said I was going to take it back. No, I said you're going to take back saying... Oh, the movie. Yeah, yeah. It, like you're going to compare that to Trump. Don't... Nothing's that bad. So can, can we get out of the next thing that we do agree is awful? Yeah. Mr. Rob Lee Field. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> um... You want to explain what has happened? Apparently there's a lot of money in the world that you and I don't have access to because somebody bought Rob Liefeld's catalog of characters. And it's not even, we clearly know Deadpool's not in that mix, but it's not even some of his better ones from Image. Um, Akiva Goldman and Graham King. I bought the rights to Rob's comic book characters from his time at Image, but it doesn't include, I believe, what was it? Youngblood, Glory, and Supreme. It includes characters such as Brigade, Bloodstrike, Cybred, Lethal, Blood Wolf, oh Battlestone, those are some 90s Boom, Nitro Gen. Uh, those are just the 90s names. Oh, yeah. I have ever heard. Um, here's my first question. Why? Like, uh, just uh. in gen, why? Like, I, I don't want it to take this route. Well, no, I don't. Okay, I didn't want the thing I'm referring it to to take this route. But, like, Valiant, I was like, oh, cool, we're getting Valiant movies and stuff. And now it's just, like, online, you know. Yeah, that I was shorts yeah. and stuff. I was really hoping to see like some full movies with those characters. This is the only thing I can think of that is going to happen with Rob Liefeld. You know, you know who should be directing goddamn Rob Liefeld character movies? Who? Zack Snyder. <laughs> Beautiful. That's what that would be a perfect fit. Hell, it'd probably be enjoyable. It would probably because like that's that attitude. Of that character, like, I said a hundred, like, if Zack Snyder directed, like, The Boys, if The Boys became a TV show or a fucking movie series, I bet that would be fucking phenomenal. This is the shit he should be doing. That's genius. That is that is pure genius. Ever, everyone go apeshit for it, because it's the same attitude. Like, just fucking guns and explosions and fucking 
bullshit. I do, though, if you're going to buy Rob Liefeld's fucking characters, they better be spot on when you see them on whatever. Like, I want patches, pouches everywhere. Just pouches and pouches of ammo and giant fucking guns. Huge chests. Oh god! The men. We we were laughing. Uh, Jay for Christmas got like me and Bobby and Chaz and you know a couple other uh, the the guys. Like he got us all Nerf guns. Nice. And we were putting them together. Bobby went around and took like extra pieces and just built them onto his gun. And I was like, oh my god! Like you look like you have a Rob Liefeld gun right now. Awesome. I was like, that's what he did back in the day. It was just like built something. It was like, yep, that's how all guns look. You got to think everybody else that that left Marvel and formed Image, they're just sitting there going, "That guy? Are you kidding me?" Right? <laughs> that guy? Everybody who was over there, all the talent they had, and they go with Rob. I just don't get it. I just one yeah. character, and you and I were talking about this. One character, Deadpool. I love him. He's amazing. Rob kind of barely made him. Basically stole him. And yeah, then he's he evolved over other writers to become what he is now. Rob Liefeld did not create this current Deadpool. He did no. not. No, he didn't. And it, yeah. the pop, the popularity of current Deadpool is uh, Dan. Uh, was it Daniel Way? He was writing Wolverine. I want to make sure that I'm saying I'm, I want to make sure I'm sourcing that correctly because he was writing uh, Wolverine Origins, and it was a story with. Um, it was a story with, uh, his son. Oh, is it Daniel? Way? Because it was Steve Dillon too. Uh, yeah. Uh, way and Dillon did it. And it was a story where, uh, they introduced Dakin. Uh, mm-hmm. it, was, yeah, it was really his introduction and Deadpool gets hired to kill Wolverine and he does it. Like he figures it out. Like he, he totally nails it. He like buys this, this space, pays the rent on it for the next, like, foreseeable future chains him up and has like a 12 foot pool that he just was going to lower Logan into. And he's like, no one knows this place exists. You're just going to sit here in the pool and dead and no one will ever find you. And it's amazing. And Deadpool was a big part of that. And from that spun out the Deadpool series that Daniel way was also writing that gained a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of traction. And that's what Deadpool core and all the other shit that came out of that's, that's who's responsible for the last boom. I know before that too, there was the cable and Deadpool series that a lot of people really liked. I didn't read too well, much I'm, of it. I'm going to um, take over for a little bit here and go back a little further. Mark Wade did some amazing stuff with his first mini series and uh, Joe Kelly and Ed McGinnis when his first, in 97, his first ongoing title. Um, they're the ones that kind of created Blind Al and Weasel, who were in the movie, that I, I love those supporting characters. Oh, no, they, absolutely. Like, they, they helped expand, like, the the Deadpool story. And they started um, they started with sort of the insanity that, that was going on. Not really the fourth wall, but kind of going on with uh, just making him just crazy, basically. Yeah. That um, was the Deadpool I fell in love with. Not the bounty hunter that the mercenary that Rob created. That I mean, that's a cool character, yeah, but that's not the guy that lasted all this time. No, 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 not at all. And I mean, but that's when I was reading, I remember Cable and Deadpool had their own series. And I, I honestly don't yeah. think I read too much of it outside of uh, the Civil War tie ins at the time. But mm-hmm. that is, I remember like Deadpool showing up in there. It being hilarious, and but that's where you really started getting a lot of that out of there. Um, although Bob, Bob the Hydra agent, did appear in uh, that series as well. Um, I do want to give a shout out to my boy Christopher Priest, who is well known for Quantum and Woody, but he also added to the Deadpool lore. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, but yeah, this is not. It's not like he's the same character that Rob Liefeld. Was not even. I like oh. I like Deathstroke. Yeah, let's steal this idea. Yeah, let's just do that, dummy. Um, anyway, well, Baffle. Baffle somebody bought all his, and for a lot of money, a lot yeah, of money. Maybe it was like a maybe it was like a fantasy football thing where they were like, if you lose, you have to buy seven figure movie deal. <laughs> if you lose, okay, so the winner gets a trophy and like a thousand dollars, or 
and then the loser has to buy Rob Liefeld's shitty characters. Hey, maybe now would be good ones. time to let all our audience know that Nerd Locker is available for sale at any time. Just uh, give us a call and uh, yeah. we'll get like, the high six, low seven figures. Just let us know. Yeah. No, we're, we could do that, guys. <laughs> um, well, we do want to wrap this up, but uh, we do want to say, too, that uh, we kind of took a break, I want to say last two years, maybe, from a lot of the conventions and a lot of the stuff we used to do. But this year we are trying to get back to it. I know we'll hit the you know the local ones in Vegas, but our plans right now are to go to San Diego Comic-Con this year. We don't know how or by what power or what's going to happen, but that is definitely something Jim and I are shooting for. Word. In 2017. We are already cleared. That's the good news. We are. We just now need to get our passes. Yes. it's For those of you that have been to the shit show known as San Diego Comic-Con, any help with like getting a hotel that isn't in fucking Chula Vista would be <laughs> greatly appreciated because that just kind of became our hangout spot. And every year we get the same hotel there. It gets like more and more shadier. So, you know. Yeah, I think the first year it was a restaurant next to the hotel. Second year was a closed down restaurant. And then third year, it was a full out strip club. It was a strip club. Yeah, it was. Uh, and as much as I love naked ladies, a whole I don't think on and then coming back and seeing the kind of ladies that were probably inside. It was like, I, I don't, don't think those are the ladies anybody wanted to see. No, like, no. <laughs> oh, man. I remember when we pulled up, though, like, Covey was in this car, and he's like, what is it now? And he's like, it's a fucking strip club. Like, Yep. Oh, that was great. That was good stuff. But, yeah, yeah uh, we're going to just try to be out there more, try to get everything back to where it was. We appreciate you guys for listening. Uh, you got anything else to say, Jim? Nope. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. All that fun stuff. Um, you find me at Brandon Zitch on just about any other social media platform. Uh, Jim, Jim, just you know, Jim's behind all the Nerd Locker stuff. So if you want to talk to him? Just say hi to Jim on Nerd Locker. But thank you guys for listening. We'll see you later. And until then, you guys have a nerdy week. Prometheus sucks. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs>